Hello from Beijing, where there's not a whole lot going on to be honest. Malls have closed, taxis aren't entering or operating in a certain districts, and uh, all restaurants are closed for dine-in services. But one place that is always, always popping, rain, hail, COVID or shine, is this place that I am lining up for here in front of me, which is called Gulo Mantol. Whenever I pass this place, morning, noon or night, there is always a queue of people lining up to get it. Oh my god, this queue just keeps going and going and going. And the thing people are lining up to buy, and myself included, I have officially joined the queue, is mantol, which is basically steamed plain white buns. No filling, no flavor, just plain steamed white buns. I've had my fair share of mantol in the past. I find it a very pleasant accompanying carb, something to dip into a salty dish or a soup or something like that, but it's never the star of the show and it's definitely not something that I personally would want to line up such a long time for, but alas, I am very keen to see what all the fuss is about, what makes this mantel so special, and I'm actually going to be cooking for my neighbours for the first time tonight, so I thought these brand name, very famous mantel might distract them from the food. Hey, you have a mantel. So as I mentioned, I'm cooking for dinner tonight, but it's only 11 a.m. and I definitely want to make the most of this beautiful weekend weather. It's blue sky, you can't really see because there are trees here. So I've decided to take myself out for a picnic and somehow incorporate a mantel into the picnic feast. So I'm just going to collect some snacks in this area around here and take myself for a little picnic by the by the water. So I've decided to come here to pick up some more food for my picnic. This is Mr. Shu's dumpling. It's a really famous place, especially among foreigners. It, you know, when there used to be a lot of tourists in Beijing, a lot of them would come here to get dumplings, and they have some really unique dumpling fillings, including cheese dumplings. Check these out: cheese and beef and shiitake mushrooms. Actually, sounds quite interesting. Banana dumplings and all these sweet dumplings. They've got chocolate and banana, chocolate and apple dumplings, and I am really curious to try one of their dumplings which is curry dumplings so weird seeing this place so empty because back in the day up until a few weeks ago this place is always full and here we go curry dumpling sampler honestly these dumpling fillings are so wild <laughs> basil curry chicken and coriander leaves so it comes with 12 for boiled it's 60 for fried it's 65 bit more expensive than your average dumplings that's for sure I'm gonna go with fried because I feel like it's gonna go well with this basil curry chicken and coriander leaves what the actual F they've got this little window here where I can see my dumplings being prepared fresh so they're not frozen they're freshly made which I am very excited about Oh, look at these. They look delicious. I mean, would you check out these gorgeous, golden, crispy looking dumplings here? Oh, smells really good. It smells like a samosa, actually. So I think getting them fried was a good idea. I'm still going to eat this by the, the water when I get the rest of my snacks, but she said they don't taste as good when they're not fully fresh. So I'm going to have one now just to like get it while it's, you know, in its prime. Got a little bag of vinegar here that I'm gonna try and awkwardly try and dip onto it. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. It's, it's quite nice, but I don't know if I'd classify this as a dumpling anymore. It's kind of gone into that kind of samosa category. I like the feeling. It's very fragrant, very coriandery, very herby goes quite well with the, the vinegar. But uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this is no longer a dumpling. Doesn't taste like a dumpling. <laughs> tastes like something not from China. <laughs> but it's nice, it's tasty. Nice and crunchy. Okay, let's go get the rest of our snacks for this picnic. So I'm just walking along this hutong and I've come across this little stand here. Whoa. Look hey, at this. What is this? We're the first one. This is our menu. Oh wow, it looks very nice. Yeah. Hey! Yes, it's a hummus. Hummus? Yeah, hummus. We have six kinds of hummus. This is more Sichuan-style, this Sichuan-style with mala ground beef. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Sichuan-style hummus. This one is really good. East food and Western food together. Oh. Yeah, you can taste the diff different flavor. You never taste 
but it's really good. And, and I think our mantel are gonna taste really good dipped into that hummus. Oh, come at me. Okay, got my hummus here, and there's still one more snack I wanna pick up. And I can find it here at this traditional Beijing snack window. There are so many snacks here, and I feel like it'd take a lifetime to get through them all. So today I'm starting with one that I've been recommended by a lot of people, and it's called Ai War War. It is a white, very cool snack. It's got hundreds of years of history, and I'm keen to see whether I'll like it. Ai War War Yo Ma. Ai War War. Ai War War. Uh, so I officially have all the ingredients I need to make today's picnic definitely the most eclectic one ever but in order to get to where I want to go to have my picnic which is the lakes area just on this side of me here at Shita High I have to go over this footbridge this is Wanning Bridge and it is a really really big deal and actually the ancient city plan of Beijing started from this point but I feel like its history is often overlooked so I'm gonna spend some time talking to you about this bridge right Right here. So back in the Yuan Dynasty, some 700 or so years ago, back when the ancient capital of Beijing was first being designed and built, the person in charge of designing the city plan of the city was called Liu Bingzhong, and he was an expert in designing according to yin and yang traditional principles. And according to this theory, water, which is a character of yin, needs to be situated in the west of the city. So the bridge in question, Wanning Bridge, is this one behind me here. And if I turn to this side, or as I could say, if I turn to my west, you can see Shita Hai and the lakes area of Beijing. So it was decided because of this bridge's location that the central axis of Beijing would actually go from this point and stretch northwards and southwards and all the important buildings of Beijing would be situated along this central axis. Of course, the Forbidden City, Tianmen, Gulo and Zhonglo, the Bell and Drum Tower. And according to this legend, it all started here. But that's not the only reason why this bridge here is really, really special. Another reason is that as the capital of the country, there are a lot of supplies that were needed in Beijing that often came from the south of China. For example, grain and rice, of which came mostly from the areas below the Yangtze River. So a grand canal system was strengthened and reinforced, resulting in the world's longest man-made canal stretching right from the south of China all the way to the capital of Beijing. And this bridge here was actually the last water gate before the cargo boats would come in through here, down this last bit of canal into Shita Hai, and the goods from all over China would be bought and sold and traded. And it's here that I'm gonna have my little picnic today, but I'm not the only one with this picnicking idea. Every single bench is occupied, and I was so lucky because someone just left this bench and I grabbed it. It's mine now. I have occupied the bench and we are about to have what is possibly the world's most eclectic picnic. We've got Middle Eastern hummus dip topped with Sichuan style beef. We've got mantol. We've got Ai War War, traditional Beijing snack. And we've got curry dumplings. So first things first, gonna get me a mantol. You know what, I'm just gonna try this mantol because I'm very curious what makes it so lineup worthy. Texture looks much like other mantel I've had. It is true what she says, it looks like there are layers here. Layers and layers of mantel. Yeah, it's a mantel, to be honest. I don't know, for me it's a mantel. I can't personally tell the difference between any other mantel I've had before, but you know, I'm no mantel expert. Let's see how it tastes when I dip it in this <laughs> citron hummus. Oh yeah, check that out. Mm. The hummus is so good. I love that addition of those Sichuan flavors in there. It goes so well with this mantel. This is delicious, 10 out of 10. Great picnic food. Let's see how one of these curry dumplings go. <laughs> Dipped in <laughs> this. <laughs> wow, honestly, what a mix. Curry, dumpling, Sichuan beef, hummus, which I guess is kind of Middle Eastern. What a combination of cultures here, but we are into it. We're, do we're doing this. Gonna dip this, <laughs> dip this curry dumpling into the hummus. Yeah. Honestly, it doesn't work as well. I won't be doing that again. This is a bit too strong of a flavor to go with this. It's a bit of a, a conflict in my mouth, but you know, yum. Yum, together, not so yum. Last thing to try at this little picnic are my Ai War War here, the tr traditional Beijing snacks. And picking it up, oh, it's very, very soft. It kind of reminds me of like a snowball, 
It's kind of very delicate, very flowery on the outside. Let's uh, give it a bite. I feel like there's white all over my mouth, is there? <laughs> I feel like there's white. <laughs> Interesting. Wow, quite sweet. Inside, there's a mix of all these different things. The outside here is made from glutinous rice, and then inside you've got this sweet mixture of seeds and nuts and dried fruits. And you've also got some sesame seeds in there as well. It's really nice, it's very refreshing, sweet. I probably wouldn't want to have more than one because it's quite overwhelming, that sweetness and that um, glutinous rice. Um, but yeah, I'd rate this Beijing snack a seven, a seven out of 10. So I just sat there enjoying my delicious, albeit slightly strange picnic and watched the world go by. Okay, so I've just gotten home and I am really, really curious to see what my neighbors, two Beijingers, think of curry dumplings. <laughs> Okay, somewhat of a success, unexpectedly. Okay, so now it's the time of my day where I try and do some Chinese studies. So I've really been focusing on improving my Chinese recently and how I've been doing that is made up of three parts. Firstly, I have bi-weekly Chinese lessons with a tutor online. Secondly, I've got my neighbors who I talk to for at least two hours a day. So that's really been helping to improve my koyu and my spoken slang and just conversational Chinese. And thirdly, my go-to little pocket app any day, everywhere, any time Chinese language app, which is Rosetta Stone. In my experience, studying a language is often really frustrating because you often can't see the progress that you're making. But that's what I love about using Rosetta Stone because it tracks your progress as you move through lessons and units. And you can see in real time as you learn phrases, sentences, and words that are gonna be really useful for everyday life and help you thrive in real world situations once you arrive, say, in China. <laughs> I just opened, I just opened up a new unit and the first thing it comes at me saying is Niyo Wentima like really aggressive. Niyo Wentima means do you have a problem? Like what's your problem? And that's actually something that I love about this app Rosetta Stone. It teaches you practical Chinese. This is a phrase that you will hear. This is a phrase that it's useful to use. Like you're walking down the street, someone's looking at you. Oh, Niyo Wentima. What? What? <laughs> One thing I particularly like about Rosetta Stone is the pronunciation tool. It's so useful because if you weren't already aware, Chinese is a tonal language. And if you get even just one tone on one character wrong, it can change the entire meaning of a sentence. So I've been using this to make sure my tones are on point. For example, you can see here. <laughs> So if you're thinking about learning a language, whether that be Arabic, French, German, Chinese, or English for that matter, I'd really recommend giving Rosetta Stone a try. And actually, if you check out the link in my description, you're gonna see great deals off all of the Rosetta Stone monthly subscriptions. And for 179 US dollars, you're actually gonna get a lifetime subscription to the app. And that's over any language that you wanna learn now or in the future. So give it a go, let me know what you think. Anyway, it's back to our video for today. And uh, I wanna show you what I'm gonna be making for dinner tonight. I've had this bubbling away in the slow cooker for about five hours already. It is my signature crowd-pleasing meal of eggplant, pork, and all these other spices and sauces, and it's absolutely delicious over noodles. Um, so I'm gonna be making that tonight, but I thought it might be strange if I just present them one solitary dish. So something interesting I found when I first came to China is when you go to someone's house for a home-cooked meal, it won't just be one thing. For example, when I say one thing, I mean like in Australia, my mom, she'll cook for dinner one thing, like a curry or a spaghetti, or a stir fry, you know, and paired with rice, that's your meal. But here in China, when it comes to home cooked meals, you don't see one dish on the table. There's at least three or four or five, depending on how many people are there, at least three. So um, I thought I should make some, at least some simple side dishes tonight. So that's what I'm gonna do. Alongside our noodles for tonight, um, I'm gonna be making the classic egg and tomato stir fry, as well as an equally classic smashed cucumber salad, two very lovely summery, fresh dishes, and I think good compliments to this quite heavy uh, noodle topping here. And of course, 
We have our mantel here that I think will also go very lovely with all the dishes that I am preparing tonight. So now that this is pretty much all good and ready to go, I need to get started on my other dishes. Lucky for me, they're both extremely simple to make. Probably the easiest recipes in the book when it comes to Chinese cooking. So I think I'm gonna be just fine. They're coming over in about 45 minutes. Let's do this. Very aesthetic color combo. This is the sauce for the cucumbers, but of course I'm not putting it on right now because that cucumber will lose all of its juice. So I'm gonna add that right before serving. It's got a lot of sesame oil and garlic and soy sauce and vinegar. I feel like these mantel, they're gonna taste a little bit better steamed, but the problem is they don't have a steamer. So I feel like I have to get a bit, of, a bit creative here. What if? I put the mantel in this, and then I put it... Oh, look at that! That kind of works! And then I just need a top for it. <laughs> I know, I'm a genius. Anyway, on to making the egg and tomato stir fry, also known as China's easiest dish to make. So everything is ready, it's all come together, and now I've just got to put some of that eggplant mixture on these nuts. Oh,对，我也买了这个馒头，因为我觉得馒头配这个吃，配这个吃，哦，好吧。哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈